Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of Python. And in this tutorial, I'm going to briefly cover over variables. So I know we did cover variable assignment and, and uh, high level variables in one of the earlier tutorials, but I want to give you a little bit more context around some, you know, use of variables and, and how you would um, go about ordering them and the concept of replacement and so forth. So today, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about general assignment rules. We'll be talking about the naming convention. I'll be talking of orders of variables, which is very important in Python. And I'm going to talk about the concept of replacement as well. Now, some people may call this something else. This is just what I like to call it, but to each their own. Anyways, let's get started. So again, general assignment rules for Python. One of the things you want to avoid in Python, like I mentioned in an earlier tutorial, is calling a variable something that is a reserved word. So for example, if I use something like y is equal to 24, I'm okay in this case because if you think about it, you know, I have 24 as a number, I've assigned it to the variable y, y doesn't really stand for anything in Python, so I'm okay in that case. But when I'm talking about general assignment rules, um, I'm saying, what, I re what I'm really saying is you want to avoid things like reserved words in Python. So int is a great example where I probably wouldn't want to write int is equal to 24 because, you know, shows built in name int. And what that means is that int is actually a built in function. So what you don't want to do is go ahead and call something int. And then when you're going to try to call the function in the future, for whatever reason, it may actually overwrite the function with 24 or just may give you an error altogether. So if you actually go to Google and you type in reserved words Python, you will get a list of reserved words that you don't want to use as functions because, again, that's going to cause errors down the road. Now, that really brings me to my next topic, and that is around the naming convention. So even when I do write something like y is equal to 24, I mean, that's great, but it's not very descriptive. So, I mean, if I were to use the variable y in a function later on, let's say I do y is equal to 24 divided by 2.2. The problem is, is that whether I'm a coder myself or if somebody else is reviewing my code, it's kind of hard to understand what x means in this case. I should replace that with y. What x means in this case and what y means in this case, because it's not very descriptive. Like, what am I talking about? Is it just some random number y that I'm just picking out of the blue and, and it's converting it to x with some algorithm? Don't know. So when you're coming up with variable names, you want to make them somewhat descriptive. So what I was trying to get towards in this one is I'm actually converting weight from kilograms or from pounds into kilograms. So a better way to write a function or a variable like this would be saying something like weight in kilograms is equal to weight in pounds divided by 2.2. And so now whether I'm going to read this in the future myself or another programmer is going to come and look at this function or this uh, variable assignment, this, is, this expression, it's very easy for me to understand what the programmer was trying to do in this scenario. So wherever possible, you want to have some kind of a good naming convention so that it's easy and the variables themselves are very descriptive. So now in a scenario like this, let's say I said my weight in pounds was equal to, let's just say it's 150, which it's not, but let's just say it is. Now I want to go and say print weight in kilograms. So technically what this should do is I've assigned weight in pounds which is 150 divided by 2.2. And that should give me my weight in kilograms. But what happens is it says name weight in pounds is not defined. So what happened here? In Python, the order of your variables is actually very, very important. The problem is, is the way Python reads the code is it reads it from top to bottom. So it doesn't actually know that weight in pounds is defined somewhere below this expression right here. And so what's happening is what it's saying is, okay, my weight in kilograms is equal to something that's not defined yet because it's not defined above divided by 2.2. In reality, what you have to do with in Python is any variable that you're going to use in some kind of a expression like this has to be defined beforehand. And now you saw that little squiggly red line went away because now it's actually able to say, okay, I have weight in pounds, which is defined as 150. I can now plug that in here and divided by 2.2. So if I hit print now, it should say 68.18 kilograms. So in Python, you have to make sure that anything, anytime you're trying to define some kind of a variable, and you know, if that's set to some kind of an expression, anything that may be in that expression that's a variable in itself needs to be defined above. And so now we're going to talk about the concept of replacement. What that means is 
If I've defined weight in pounds is equal to 150, and let's say for whatever reason I come and I say weight in pounds is now equal to 200. Well, what's Python gonna do? Is Python supposed to say, all right, well, I'm gonna take the 150 and divide it by 2.2, or am I gonna take the 200 and divide it by 2.2? Or am I gonna take both and divide it by 2.2? Let's see what happens. So when I run it, you see the numbers actually change to 90.9 .9 kilograms. And this is where the concept of replacement comes in. Whenever I define some kind of a variable, in this case, weight in pounds, and I redefine that variable again somewhere below, that new expression or that new value is always gonna overwrite what is before. And so that is just the rule of Python. So you wanna be careful with that when you're defining your variables, it's always a good idea, and this is at least what I do, is I try to define them at the top. So this way, when I'm actually writing any of my code, you know, below here, whether they're gonna be functions, whether they're gonna be expressions, whether they're gonna be whatever, I know for a fact that, I, that there's very little chance that I'm gonna overwrite it, unless I'm actually intending to overwrite it after some point in the code. That's a different story. But I always put all my variable definitions up top. This way I know that there's a very slim chance I'm gonna overwrite something and mess up my calculation. And so I actually wanna go through an exercise here. Let's go through the following exercise where the cost of my cell phone. So cost of cell phone, and I have an iPhone so these buggers are expensive. So I'm gonna say $1,200. And that was, you know, something that I paid a while ago. Now, today, the cost of cell phones are actually, you know what? Let's say cost of Android. Cost of Android is 1000 And we'll say cost of iPhone is 1200 Now, I go to the store, and the guy says, hey, listen, you sign up for a contract, and I can take off $300 of whatever phone you want. You know, these phones are going to vary in price. So how do we do this? Now there's a few ways to do this. One, I can just say, all right, let's just say the discount is equal to 300 bucks. Regardless of what phone I got, he says, you go on a two year contract and I'll knock off 300 bucks. Sounds like a crappy deal, but that is life. Now there's two ways I can do it. I can just say cost, cost of iPhone is now equal to $900. You can say cost of Android is equal to $700 print these statements out and I'm good to go. But you know what, I'm a negotiator. I like going back and forth with the person and I wanna negotiate my discount. And I want him to write down or I want him to print out for me every single time. So I'm gonna say, every single time we go back and forth, cost of iPhone, cost of iPhone. And then the same thing we're gonna say, you know, cost of an Android is the cost of the Android. So when I print this out, let's see what it gives me. All right, so now I'm gonna print this out. It's gonna say, cost of iPhone is $900, cost of Android is $700. But I'm negotiating my discount every single time. And so whatever this value is, this you know how they always write contracts up. This is a fixed value that's in the contract. It's not gonna change. The only thing that's gonna change on my receipt is the discount value. So now let's say I go and I change my discount to $400. Now I gotta go back and I gotta change this to $800 and change this to $600. And you can imagine if I had 10 different models, this would be cumbersome. So there's another way that we can do this actually. And in Python, I can reassign the cost of iPhone using the variable cost of iPhone. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. If I say cost of iPhone here, so get rid of these. I guess I could just use these, but it's okay. Cost of iPhone is equal to the cost of iPhone minus the discount. So now what this is actually saying is, hey, listen, I'm gonna take the $1,200 that was initially assigned to the cost of iPhone, I'm gonna take the $400 and subtract that from the 1200, and I'm gonna come up with a new value of $800. And so the benefit of this is every time we go back and negotiate this discount, I don't need to adjust anything else other than the discount value, and it'll adjust the price on all of my phones. So let's see how this works. So now if I say cost of Android is equal to the cost of Android minus discount. So technically, if this works, this should print 800 and this should print 600. So let's see what it does. So if you see, it says cost of iPhone is 800 and 600. And now if I adjust this and I say, I'm a super negotiator and I'm gonna get these things for almost half off or if not more, I go back and run this, I should get 600 and I should get 400. And I do, and I get 600 here and I get 400 here. And so this is a really good example. And you're gonna see that this kind of a statement is going to be used quite often in Python, especially when we're doing something like increments. So when we get into the looping functions, you know, one of the things we wanna do is we wanna set a counter where that counter is gonna originally be zero. And every single time we go through the loop, we're gonna say counter is equal to 
counter plus one. And so what I wanna do, and I won't go over the looping statement right now, but I wanna have some loop in the future with some kind of a condition attached to it. And I wanna say that every single time I go through this loop, I wanna increment my counter one by one. So my count is originally zero, I go through the loop once, it's gonna add one, and my counter is gonna be one. I go through that loop again and my counter is gonna be two. And generally you'll continue looping until you say, hey, keep looping until my counter is equal to whatever number, I can say five. And then after that, stop. So reassigning a variable using the variable is actually something that is quite popular in Python, especially in looping. But even in scenarios like this, and like I said, if you had 15, 16, 20, 50, 70 models here, where you had the fixed price that was never gonna change, but only your discount was gonna change, you really only have to change that number once, and then you can go ahead and print certain things out. So that was really today our uh, example on variables. Again, guys, if you like this, please comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.